In this video I want to show you the depth of field effect. This is a new technique that was introduced in Photoshop Elements 10. Let's go over to the panel bin and go into guided edit mode by clicking on the guided button. You'll find it right here. Click once. Now inside the guided edit mode let's go down to lens effects and click on depth of field. As the name implies, the guided edit mode walks you through a process step by step. And the first step is to choose a method, and we have two choices, simple or custom. I'm all for simple, so it was the first thing I tried, but I didn't like the results and it didn't give me enough control over the effect. So I'm going to choose custom, but I encourage you to play around with simple and maybe you'll prefer the way it works. So I'll just click on custom. Now I'm guided through three steps. Step one is to select the area of your photo that you want to stay in focus. In this case, I want my son Carl to stay in focus. Step one further instructs to use the quick selection tool to select those areas that you want in focus. And it conveniently places the quick selection tool right there for you. I'll click on the tool to activate it. And now I'll go over the area I want in focus to select it. But I can see my brush is way too small, so I'm going to use my right bracket key to the right of the letter P. So I'm going to click, and every time I click on the right bracket key, my brush gets bigger. And if I want it smaller, I press the left bracket key. And now I'm just going to click and drag over the parts I want to stay in focus. It gave me a pretty good selection, but it selected a few areas that I don't want included. I can take those areas out of the selection by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And you can see if you look at my cursor, I'm going to press the Option key right now, and you can see that plus sign turns into a minus sign when I do that, indicating that it will subtract from the selection as I click and drag it. So I'm going to go out here over the to the areas that I want to subtract and I'm going to click and drag while I'm holding the Option key. And it actually went in a little too far so I'm going to let go of the Option key and you can see I get my plus sign back indicating it will add to the selection. And I'm just going to click a couple times in those areas and then I'm going to subtract this little part right here and I'm going to add this part here. And now I'm going to zoom up uh, by his hair because there's some areas I want to go into and, and subtract from. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut which on a Mac is spacebar and the command key and you'll see I get the zoom tool icon and on a PC it would be the spacebar and the control key. And then I'm just going to click once in the area I want to zoom up in and I want to take away this area in between his hair. So I'm going to make my brush smaller by pressing on the uh, left bracket key. And once I get it the size I want, I'll just click. Whoops, I need to hold down Option and click to subtract those areas. And I'll take away some of this. It doesn't have to be perfect because um, I'll show you how we can adjust our selection even after we run the effect. But I just want to quickly get it as good as I can. I'm scrolling around in my photo by pressing the spacebar key and then click and drag. I'm going to zoom back down by this time I'm going to hold the spacebar, command, and option key to zoom out. And on a PC it would be the spacebar, control, and alt key. Next, step two says to click the add blur button to create the effect. So I'll click on that. And now we can see our results. The last step gives you the option of increasing the blur by using the slider. So I'm going to slide that up and it's, I think 4 looks about good. So I'll stop there. 
I really like the effect, but I notice around the edges between the clear and the blurry areas, it looks unnatural. But we can fix that. I'm going to click Done. And now I'm going to go back into full edit mode by clicking the full button near the top. Now that we're back in full edit mode, let's look at the layers panel. You can see Elements added two new layers above the original background layer. And the top layer has a layer mask attached to it. We can use the layer mask to clean up the transition areas. If you don't know how layer masks work, don't worry, I'll keep this really simple. All you need to realize is that on the layer mask, the white areas represent the clear parts of our photo, and the black areas represent the blurry parts. I want to make some of the edges more blurry, so I just need to paint those areas with black. I'm going to grab my brush tool by clicking on it in the toolbox. Then we'll go up to the brush preview and click on the little arrow next to it to see my brush previews. And if you have a different set of brushes than what you see that I have, there's this little drop-down menu here. It's an arrow you can click on and just choose basic brushes. And I want to select a soft-edged brush. And then I'm going to close my brush previews by clicking on this little X at the top. Now when I paint, I want to make sure that I'm painting on the layer mask and not the actual photo because as you can see that's definitely not what I want. I'll undo that and go to my layers panel and you see I have two thumbnails on this top layer. The one on the left represents my photo and the one on the right represents the layer mask. To make sure I'm painting the layer mask I just need to click on it once and you will see a border appear around the four corners indicating that it's active. So now when I start painting over in the work area I know that I'm painting on the layer mask. And now all I have to do is paint over those areas that I want to be blurry up by the hair here. And that gives me more of the effect that I want around those edges. I hope that's not too confusing. I know layers and layer masks can be really confusing when you first start out. And that's all there is to it. We end up with a really nice depth of field effect all from Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.